Seventeen-year-old Eric Malasawa is studying for his A-levels at Beni Secondary School in Eastern Congo. But he also holds a more high-profile role in this town. Eric is the president of Beni's Child Parliament, a 50-strong group of under 18-year-olds who are taking a stand against child abuse and protecting the rights of children that can't protect themselves. In a country ravaged by a decade of war, many children find themselves victims of abuse, neglect and exploitation. But up until now, they've had no one to turn to. But this ingenious band of children is starting to change all that. One of the most serious challenges that Eric's parliament have to deal with is child prostitution. Eric and fellow parliamentarian Solange visit the girls and try to encourage them to start a new life. This is the house of child and prostitutes. They take me to the brothel where 17-year-old Mummy Labashi has been working for the last four years. She ran away from her mother and father at the age of 12. Now she lives here with her son Fabrice and three other child prostitutes. The girls are braiding their hair as they wait for clients. But very soon we go inside, past the bedroom where they work, and then they begin to tell me their stories. <coughs> <laughs> My father married the second wife and we started fighting. So a friend of mine suggested that if we come here to Beni, we can survive by becoming prostitutes. My mother died and my father went to join the army. And so I want to stay with my uncle, but he couldn't help me and he sent me to Beni to become a prostitute. With HIV prevalence at 27% among Congo's prostitutes, Eric explains the health risks, hoping to persuade the girls to leave prostitution. Mummy's parents are still alive, but it's shame and the thought of returning empty-handed that has stopped her from being reunited with her parents. Until now. If I can give my parents a present, I will return home. Even if I have a can of kerosene, it will be enough for me to return home. Mummy, are you serious? If, if, I, if I bought you 20 litres of kerosene, would you really go back home? Me? Yes. Can we go tomorrow? Yes, I know the way home, and we can go. How much? <coughs> how much will it cost me to buy twenty liters of kerosene tomorrow? She says uh, it's uh, thirty-five dollars. True to her word, the next day, Mummy and her son Fabrice are waiting with their world's possessions. Mummy, ma Mummy, she's ready to go back home. He arranged his things. She waves goodbye to her old life and sets off. The child parliament aren't just trying to protect children from prostitution, and it's not long before Eric gets a call. After school today, I receive a telephone call, and uh, in our office there is a boy who is abused by their parents. Uh, he will need our help. 14-year-old Salama Musafiri has been forced to leave home with his 10 brothers and sisters after his father decided to look for a second wife. In a country where the structure of society is crumbling and corruption reigns, 
There's very few people children can turn to. Eric promises Salama that the child parliament will take an adult with them and make a visit to the boy's father to try and reconcile the situation. Salama knew where to find the child parliament after hearing their weekly radio broadcasts. A message urging parents and adults to respect children and defend their rights. Benny holds the depressing record of having one of the highest number of child prostitutes in a single town. Officially 539 children out of a population of 25,000 are known to work as prostitutes here, with many more going undetected. But as the fighting continues, child prostitution is on the increase. Eric and Vice President Solange want to take me to yet another brothel to visit a group of even younger children. We have uh, some girls, uh, some ch children who want to join the prostitutes. We come to talk to them uh, in order to discourage them. Deal. The brothel is full of clients and children. These children work for me. They sell drinks and they help to bring money in for me. How many children have you recruited into prostitution? <laughs> many. So many. Hundreds. I can't remember the number because they come and go. If they come to me, I cannot throw them out. If we have something to eat, we share. But if not, we starve together. It then transpired that Tartine and Leonce hadn't actually started work as prostitutes. They'd only just arrived. Leos, Tentin, have you ever slept with a man before? Yeah, yeah. Man, no. When are, when are you planning to start working as a prostitute? I mean, are they going to start tonight? Is, is that, you know, is it going to be tonight, their first day It depends. It depends. When a man comes, they can start. So if a man comes tonight, they will start work as a prostitute tonight? Yeah. yeah. How much money do you hope to earn? Some people be that. Two hours, ten dollars. <laughs> How much of that ten dollars will you take? I take five dollars and I give her five dollars. Are you happy with that arrangement? <laughs> Another girl at the brothel, Mafi, left primary school and turned to prostitution after both her parents were murdered. Have you started working as a prostitute yet? Mm. Yes. How long have you been working as a prostitute? And you're gonna progress us. And that is just the beginning. She will not stop now. If she doesn't stop now, she'll be doing this for the rest of her life. Why don't you sleep with women your own age? Why are you sleeping with a woman who's so young? She will not lack any food whilst I am here. <laughs> but I, I, understand, I understand what you're saying, but you're not really helping this girl, are you? You're, you're abusing this girl. I'm not abusing her. I am helping her. If I am not here, who is going to help her? At only 13 years old, Mafi has quickly learned to block out the pain of trading sex for survival and has become reliant on the men who sleep with her. <laughs> it's not long before Mafi's back to work. And it would only be a matter of hours until Tatine follows her. 
I wanted to see what the authorities had to say about the high level of child prostitution in Beni. So I arranged to visit the head of child protection at the local police station. Child prostitution is a big problem here in Beni. Parents have become irresponsible and their children go into prostitution because they need money for school fees, food and clothing. But we cannot close the brothels because if we do, the children will be on the streets. Many cases of abuse go unpunished because children are often too scared to approach the authorities themselves. But they do feel able to speak to the child parliament simply because they're run by children just like them. This is the building of our lawyer. When we have case of children who, who, who is abused, we bring it to him and uh, he fights for justice in the court. Yeah. If it was not for the child parliament, we would not be able to get justice for the children. A young girl was badly bent by her stepmother. She nearly died. It was the child parliament who approached us on behalf of the girl and we were able to take the matter to court. The stepmother who had burned the little girl with boiling water is now serving a prison sentence. I catch up with Mummy Labashi, who is soon to be reunited with her family after four years apart. She ran away from home at the age of 12, and now she's returning without warning with Fabrice, a child of her own. Not surprisingly, she's hesitant about the reunion. She's been working as a prostitute since she disappeared. Her family have heard nothing from her and never expected her to return. They're not at home when we arrive. We wait, but very soon an inquisitive crowd gathers. They're not a welcome party, but have come to make their judgment. Public lynchings for those that bring shame on the community are not uncommon in Congo. Eric does his best to calm the tension and encourages the crowd to accept mummy back into the village. <laughs> Eventually, Mummy's family arrives. It's a time for celebration, but her past life is a shock for them. I'm happy for her to stay, but she must introduce me to the father of her baby. <laughs> Mummy is lucky, for now her family have agreed to take her back. But the plight of many other children remains uncertain. Over the last five years, the child parliament has supported hundreds of young girls and boys who in the past would have suffered in silence. In a country ruined by war and racked by poverty, the child parliament remains a glimmer of hope.